Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you found what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about the coolant temperature in the Volvo P80 cars. This is the 850s, S&V 70s between 1992 and 2000. This is a 1998 Volvo V70R in the U.S. market. That temperature gauge needle is right, we consider, in the middle, 3 o'clock position. It is four notches down from the red, four white notches, and it is running at normal range. It normally gets to that position at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And it won't start rising from that position until the engine coolant temperature is about 235, 238 degrees. It starts rising toward the red area. As you can see there, I have the coolant temperature shown in my scan gauge. It is now at 200 degrees. The fan will kick on on this model from 93, 92 all the way up to 98. The fan, engine cooling fan, will kick on at about 216 degrees and it will kick back off at 206 degrees. The thermostat begins to open at about 188 degrees and it is fully open around 206 degrees. So, normally if you're moving right along, cruising, 35 mile an hour or faster enough air is getting into the engine compartment through the grill your temperature won't rise higher than 204 210 degrees so your fan normally didn't cut on however if you're in extreme heat or the vehicle's not moving to push enough air through that grill your fan will kick on at 216 also if your air conditioner is running your fan should be running these engine fans are two-step fans. They have a slow speed and a high speed. They kick in the high speed when your engine temperature uh, gets above a certain temperature. Right below your engine thermostat, that's your thermostat housing. That sensor right there is your ECT. Your, it reports your coolant temperature to your engine. As long as you have coolant in your reservoir, that sensor is normally accurate. If some reason it malfunctions, it'll cause your reading to your computer to go haywire, and that may cause your car not to start properly. As you can see, this one, the plug is not stored in its proper bracket, and it has extra wires connected to it, so at some point, it was not making good electrical contact into that plug adapter so someone added and corrected that by putting some more wires on the harness the engine fan just turned on the engine coolant temperature is 216 degrees it is now dropping when it drops to 206 the fan will stop the fan just kicked off it is 206 degrees and as you can see the gauge is not moving the gauge is programmed to stay in a normal range where you see it so now that the fan is kicked on we know that this coolant system is up to normal operating temperature this coolant system is not a pressurized system I always thought it was however it is not it has a reservoir that coolant flows through especially when the thermostat is open coolant comes through this little hose goes down the back into the coolant system there flows through the engine circulates through the radiator through the other coolant hoses and coolant always goes through your heater core so even if you dial your temperatures at full cold, that will not stop 
coolant from circulating into your heater core so don't think that is something that you can stop fluid from going through by the climate controls you actually have to disconnect those two hoses there and connect them together to bypass that interior heater core the heater core is inside the vehicle when this engine is running it may be normal for your level to rise about a quarter of an inch inch at the most it should not continue to rise while the engine heats up and keeps running so if you drive the car for 20 or 30 minutes and this level rises all the way to the top you likely have a breach in your head gasket and you should be able to get this cap off if you turn it very slowly let it hiss a little bit of warm air out of there you should be able to get this cap off it may take you a minute to get the cap all the way off but if you cannot get that cap off you likely have a breach in your head gasket so you slowly turn this and if your head gasket is good it will not turn into a volcano if your head gasket is bad your engine is running you're at operating temperature your thermostat's open you should be able to get this cap off without your fluid rising up out of the reservoir so as you can see the level came up just barely and it is holding steady this vehicle has a good head gasket when the engine is not running and it's hot you usually cannot get this cap off of there so do not try to remove the cap when the engine is not running especially if the engine is hot servicing or refilling the coolant system on this vehicle is relatively easy especially if you have the proper volvo thermostat the volvo thermostat has what we call a jiggle pin in it this little pin allows air to escape the system while you're servicing it as you can see there that pin moves around there it allows air out so as you fill the system up through this reservoir air will come up here and allow fluid to fill up in the system now if you replace the radiator hose or drain the radiator replace the radiator or some other reason where you had to empty your system and you were not able to put that amount back in there you will have to allow a little bit of trapped air in the system to get out that does not take much so what you do you fill the system up as best you can you fill the reservoir up almost to the top you put the cap back on the reservoir you start the engine let the car get up to normal operating temperature you could take it for a three to five mile drive that is enough time to get the engine hot if you have a good thermostat a good Volvo thermostat and that will circulate the coolant through the system circulate coolant in this bottle and since this bottle is at the highest point air will come out of the hose system through the channels of the engine through the radiator anywhere air may be the flow of the fluid will push that air back up to this bottle and when you come stop the car the air will be in this bottle the fluid in the reservoir will be low and the next time this engine cools off all of the air should be in the bottle you take the cap off fill the bottle back up to this line which is the maximum line and you should be good to go should not have to fill this up anymore in the event you drive throughout the day as long as you don't get a low coolant light you can check it the next day top it off you definitely should be good to go there if for some reason you're driving around and you get a low coolant light because the bottle is low and you don't have a leak you can stop the car put it in park or neutral set the parking brake the engine is still running and as demonstrated you can slowly take this cap off put the level up to the maximum line 
put the cap back on, you should be good to go. So this is not a system that takes three, four days to burp all the air out. The air comes out pretty quick because this is the highest point of the system and the system circulates and it is not a pressurized system. There you have it. That should explain to you everything you need to know about this coolant system. If for some reason you have a question, go ahead, leave it below. Me or someone else may be able to answer it. And thanks for watching. And uh, leave any kind of comment you want about what you've experienced with this coolant system. Thanks again for watching. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.